I attended the financial engineering program from IAQF and it's easily one of the best decisions I made. As we all know that there is no rigorous financial engineering program that was available in India, be it engineering from the IITs or financial management from the IIMs. I believe that IAQF fills this gap very well. It offers a rigorous program that teaches you both the intricate mathematics as well as the financial intuition behind it. It has great faculty, many of whom are PhDs from Stanford, as well as people and professors who are there from the Indian Statistical Institute. The program focuses a great deal on applying theory that is there in the markets to real-world problems. The environment and the colleagues that I had made it one of the best experiences so far. Good evening to all of you, and I'd like to welcome you to this session on financial engineering, this webinar on financial engineering and the program on applied mathematical finance, which is a financial engineering certificate program uh, designed for one finance jobs, one finance roles. So first, let me discuss something about financial engineering in general. Now, this field, this uh, discipline of financial engineering is also known by a few other names like uh, one of the most popular names is quantitative finance and the other name is computational finance and mathematical finance. So financial engineering or quantitative finance or mathematical finance or computational finance, they all mean the same thing. Now, first let me address one of the common misconceptions that uh, lot of engineering uh, people in India have and uh, let's say engineering and numerical oriented uh, people have that they can they have a notion that finance and accounts are same thing uh, that cannot be further from the farther from the tr truth because finance and accounts are two entirely different domains so one of the reasons that a lot of engineers do not come into this field, do not even look into this field is that they think that uh, uh, finance is accounts and they might be too bored with accounts and which might not interest them. So first is this demystification that I want to do about uh, finance not being accounts at all. And on top of it, financial engineering is as, uh, as different or as further from accounts as, uh, well, India is from US. So nothing can, can be further. Now, this field of financial engineering is very, very suitable for people with a numerical, some kind of numerical background, be it engineering, be it mathematics or uh, physics even. Okay. And preferably a programming background. So this is a field which is very, very suited. Financial engineering is a very, very well suited field for people uh, who are engineers. That's why actually this program that uh, we designed is called uh, uh, Certificate Program in finan 
uh, and applied mathematical finance for engineers. But just to make sure that it doesn't convey a wrong message, this program is not just meant for engineers. In fact, people from um, commerce background, they can uh, pick up the subject provided they have gone through the uh, background that is required, which in fact is part of our primus. Now, so what is financial engineering? Basically, uh, three, it, it is a overlap. It is a combination. It is a multidisciplinary mm -hmm. field with a combination of three very distinct disciplines. So one is computer science, one is mathematics and statistics, and finance and economics. So the overlap of all these three fields is what financial engineering consists of. Now, to take it further, what does it mean? What does financial engineering mean? Well, uh, what it does is, what this, theory, uh, this field does is, uh, it applies the theories taken from financial economics. Now, when I say financial economics, it's very different from economics as we know. It's, it is not microeconomics, it is not macroeconomics, it's a different field. It's financial economics. So it takes theories from financial economics, it takes theories from mathematics, statistics and probability, it takes theories from econometrics, and it borrows theories from physics. And then what it does is it uses tools, complex tools and techniques engineering techniques basically from uh, numerical methods and engineering techniques programming methods programming techniques programming uh, 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 per se and it is applied to solve the problems of investment finance so this field basically addresses this field is uh, uh, geared towards solving very complex problems that are faced in modern investment finance. Very different from what uh, used to be in the world earlier. Now, one of the uh, very good definitions of financial engineering is given by uh, Professor Zui Bodhi of the Boston University. Uh, so he defines it as the application of science-based mathematical models to uh, decisions about uh, savings, to decisions about investing, and borrowing and lending, and managing risk. But this is in the context of companies. Financial engineering is for companies. For it can be mostly it is banks and financial institutions, but it can be corporates as well, even manufacturing companies, manufacturing companies, treasuries big trading companies, treasuries. In fact, this field uh, is applicable across the board. Now, why do we need financial engineering? What is the need for financial engineering or quantitative finance? Well, one of the reasons is that modern investment finance is very much mathematical and statistical in nature. It is very, very much science. And Investment, people say, is art. Well, these kind of uh, investments are more science than art. So nowadays, uh, investments by banks, investment by investment banks, investment by even uh, any other financial comp uh, financial institution, financial company, uh, be it a uh, insurance company, be it uh, some uh, finance company finance lending company, and even treasuries, even big companies like Reliance, their treasuries, big companies like General Motors or Boeing, their treasuries, their treasury departments, even they in, engage in complex investments using complex financial instruments. So analyzing the risk, risk analysis and Investment analysis, basically data analysis, 
and then building models is required for them. And these are very complex and that's why the need for financial engineering. Now, who are financial engineers and what do they do? Now, financial engineers are specialists. They are super specialists. So it's like an MBA finance or a chartered accountant is a specialist in finance. And on top of that, somebody wants to become even more specialized than an MBA finance or somebody wants to more uh, get, become more specialized than a chartered accountant. That's where that kind of specialization, that kind of super specialization is what uh, financial engineers are. So what do they do? They apply complex mathematical formulae via computer programming to devise financial strategies, devise investment strategies to analyze market trends, market moves, uh, build data backed models for forecasting and prediction. Now companies, they employ these kind of people who have this kind of advanced degrees in financial engineering to work as investment managers, investment bankers, or traders to improve their existing investment products, to get into new investment strategies. So that's quite much in demand. Then also, by the, they are required by the uh, IT companies, the software companies, the software vendors who are supporting the banks, who write softwares for the banks, and who want to write more complex analysis uh, level software for the banks. So they are sought after by uh, these kind of software companies as well. And then there are uh, uh, analytics companies who look for uh, people with this kind of specialization, who provide analytics to banks, who provide analytics uh, to other finance companies. So a financial union needs to have a very thorough knowledge of the financial market. And mind it, it has got nothing to do with accounts. So it's very uh, much related to what uh, engineers or people with uh, maths or physics or econometrics or even economics background would like to have. And for chartered accountants, they want to uh, learn even more. That's a field which, you know, uh, is very uh, well suited for them. So they need to have a very good knowledge of the markets and its volatilities. And then they are used by engineers to develop uh, simulations and uh, predict the markets. Now, financial engineering uh, is uh, uh, broadly also divided uh, into two uh, verticals, two pillars. It can be used for uh, quantitative investment management and it can be used for uh, risk analytics. So both these domains are actually subsets of financial engineering. Now, uh, what is a financial risk management? Now, risk management is... Uh, now a hot topic across the globe because lots of these financial institutions and banks, they went through that big crisis in 2008 when lots of companies failed, lots of the banks failed and uh, it landed the global economy in, in a very bad shape. So a lot of companies, a lot of financial institutions they become more aware and more uh, receptive to do more complex analysis of their financial positions. So risk management has become very important. And for that, you need people who can um, analyze data and build models and help these institutions. So with the crisis that happened in the global markets, what has become very uh, lucrative is a career in risk management. So it has become very lucrative across the globe and it has become a lucrative in India as well. In fact, there are very uh, few people who are 
properly qualified enough and trained enough to uh, do risk analytics. There are several types of risk that is there. Market risk, credit risk, operations risk, companies risk, country risk, and few others. So people have lots of opportunities for careers in these domains. Now, what are the skills and knowledge that financial engineers need? So as I mentioned, it's a overlap. It's a multidisciplinary field with an overlap between three fields. Financial economics, mathematics statistics, and computer programming. So the things that a financial engineer needs to have, the, the exposure that he or she needs to have very good understanding of modern finance and uh, that is very different from traditional finance. And they require financial economics knowledge. They need to have knowledge of econometrics, time series analysis, machine learning. That's a pretty uh, hot area right now. And the person needs to have programming knowledge because a lot of companies, they require that because the job requires that. The professional uh, person implements the theories. It's not just a, a theoretical field, it's a very applied field. And that's why this program is also called Applied Mathematical Finance. Because in general, there is a field of mathematical finance, which is a very theoretical field. But then this program doesn't uh, stop at that. It actually takes you uh, further and um, goes into implementations. So one requires knowledge of computer programming and uh, requires knowledge of statistical packages. Now, nowadays R and Python as a programming uh, uh, language have become very, very popular in this domain. And one needs to have a good understanding of advanced mathematics. So the financial engineering as a skill, they require very good understanding of stochastic calculus and linear algebra, which is taught in this program. They need to have a good understanding of advanced statistics, multivariate probability and advanced statistics. They need to know methods for numerical computations. They need to have expertise in pricing of complex derivatives. So these are the skill sets which a financial engineer needs to have. Now, why would one be interested in this career as a financial engineer? So one can be a software engineer, one can be an MBA working in uh, some finance company, but then uh, what would be a motivating factor? So one of the things is uh, uh, careers in financial engineering generally draw comparatively higher salaries than uh, comparative experience and comp comparative exposure software engineers and MBAs. And second thing is jobs in better companies and also better kinds of jobs. So the level of job satisfaction is also higher because you are uh, involved in much uh, more analytical uh, uh, programming and analytical jobs, analytical model building uh, rather than very simple stuff. So uh, there is better challenges and job satisfaction. Now, what kind of uh, careers are there in uh, financial engineering and the allied fields of risk management? So you can have a career in the quantitative research and analysis teams. So lots of financial companies have quant research teams. Or one can be a software developer known as a quant developer. So development of um, quantitative and analytical softwares. Then one can be into valuation. One can have a career in valuation teams. So building valuation models, valuation of very complex financial assets, financial instruments. One can be in model validation, validating models 
which are developed by somebody else also requires extreme expertise. One can be in portfolio management, one can be in portfolio analytics, one can be in risk management and risk analytics, one can be a derivative structurer, one can be in high frequency trading or algorithmic trading or even otherwise derivative trading. So these are the career uh, areas and what kind of companies are there that employ financial engineers? So one would be the MNC software giants like uh, Oracle Financial, SunGuard, Numerics, Morgan Stanley, MSCI. Then there are MNC investment banks, be it Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, Trade Suisse, Nomura. The MNC commercial banks, JP Morgan or Citigroup, Barclays and Deutsche. Then consulting companies, the MNC consulting companies like KPMG and Deloitte and Ernst & Young as well. You have uh, MNC hedge funds, the most famous being Renaissance Technologies, but they require PhDs. But then there is DE Shaw, which has a team in India as well. Very well paid jobs. Citadel, Citadel and Millennium Partners and such kind of hedge funds. Then Indian software giants like TCS, Infosys and Reproduce, which are setting up teams in this domain to cater to the banks. Then MNC analytics firms like Accenture and Capgemini, Genpak and Crisil and Copal and others. Then insurance companies, then energy trading companies, then large broking houses, be it Edelweiss, which has a very uh, good team in this domain. And of course, there are trading firms which employ financial engineers nowadays. Now generally, what kind of salaries do we see in India for financial engineers? The salary ranges. Uh, for a fresher, it can range anywhere from five to eight lakhs, depending on uh, where you have done your undergrad, what kind of undergrad or postgrad background you have. And for a person with one to four year experience, and depending on which uh, segment one is working in, whether it's a MNC company or a Indian company, it can range anywhere from seven to 12 lakhs per annum. And somebody with five, uh, excess of five years of experience to eight years of experience, the salary can vary anywhere from 12 to 30 lakhs. And somebody who can, uh, who has uh, gathered eight years of experience in the field or more and has been working in the appropriate domain, some of them can earn much, much higher than what the figure you see on screen, especially the trading uh, uh, large experienced traders. Now, are there career opportunities in India? Well, there are. Now it's opening up. It's hot. There's so many teams that have been set up. There are major banks which are uh, opening up their in-house or uh, captive analytics teams. So there, uh, there are teams being set up in Mumbai, Pune, in this area, the Delhi Gurgaon area. Then there are major IT companies which are setting up teams in Bangalore and Hyderabad and Chennai. And these companies, they set up teams which support the global operations. So one can have a global career. Actually, it's not just a career that you have in India. You have a couple of years experience and you are uh, on that uh, road. Now, what kind of, uh, this is a, just a snapshot of financial engineering jobs that are posted in some of the uh, well-known sites, like Quant Finance Jobs is a very important site in this domain. So one can look at, you know, equity portfolio analyst or senior software engineer. So it can be a, a risk quantitative uh, risk analyst with Morgan Stanley or Trade Space. One can be, uh, you, you know, just see that people are looking for Python and SQL exposure along with financial engineering expertise as quantitative analysts. 
So this is a very, very uh, um, important field for uh, engineers and software engineers. So a lot of the software people, the software developers, they think that uh, finance is uh, an area they would not like, but this is not finance again. This is their uh, area that they love. So if I ju just uh, segregate the jobs by sectors, and this is a snapshot that is there on willbot.com, which is a very, very uh, popular forum for quant people. So there are jobs in algorithmic trading, there is jobs in information technology area, then fixed income, hedge funds, risk management, and so on and so forth. And again, just to mention that there is no boundaries. Uh, the, the, there is no boundaries in terms of uh, jobs. One can apply for jobs if you have the skills, necessary skills for jobs abroad as well. So you can just look at the, the requirements that they post for these kind of jobs. So they look for three things. Knowledge of finance, good programming background, knowledge of programming, at least some uh, coding capabilities to implement what they learned, and the background knowledge of the applied maths. So the relevant mathematics that is uh, used in this field. So that's what they are looking for. So just a snapshot of, uh, again, financial engineering jobs that are there already in India. Okay, so this is a snapshot from the previous year, last year, late last year, second half of last year. Now, just to conclude this uh, uh, discussion on uh, what exactly is financial engineering, uh, one cannot conclude this discussion without mentioning the most famous financial engineer in the world, Jim Simmons, who heads uh, the most famous uh, hedge fund, Renaissance Technology. These are uh, hedge funds are by their very nature, very low profile. So you would not be hearing uh, Renaissance Technology as much as you would hear about uh, uh, Citibank or JP Morgan, because hedge funds by their very nature are very secretive. And he used to manage over $25 billion in uh, assets. He retired in 2009 with a net worth of almost $14 billion. And that has grown from just half a million dollar in 2004. A very successful company that he built as a financial engineer. And he built strategies, black box strategies, what are known as black box strategies. So a lot of uh, financial engineers who get into trading side or the uh, investment management side, one can go into investment management or trading side, one can go into uh, analytics side. So it uh, uh, depends on your choice and your interests. If one goes into the interest and has interest and goes into the investment management side, there are untold opportunities in that area. Now, this is just about uh, what financial engineering is. Now I'll mention about the uh, course that uh, we are discussing, that is the Applied Mathematical Finance for Engineers program. It's a certificate program of short duration of seven months so I'll lay out what uh, this program does. First is, uh, let me tell uh, you about why this program was uh, designed. This program was designed because we keep, uh, we at IQF uh, keep getting uh, inquiries for, from the industry, from the finance companies, as well as uh, even software companies, software companies like SunGuard, software companies like Wipro, okay. And there are lots of other companies which I would not be able to uh, name right now. 
uh, they come up with these uh, requirements that if you have students you send us and uh, what they are looking for is the JD, the job description and the requirements, what they are looking for is three things. Good knowledge of finance, good background in mathematics or statistics and the appropriate background. One need not be a mathematician for that. Okay, just the relevant mathematics and the statistics that is required. And programming. And that's a very um, hot uh, kind of combination. These three skill set, if any person is having, and one can demonstrate that. If you, if you just go through a program and then forget everything, then nobody can help, obviously. But if you demonstrate that you have these three skills, you are a hot property. So we keep getting these inquiries and uh, earlier we used to conduct uh, training for uh, uh, banks in this particular domain. Even now we do it. So the, the institutions, they uh, recruit people who may have uh, either programming background and math background or finance background, but no programming background and, no, uh, you know, just part of it. So the overlap, three field overlap, uh, overlap expertise they don't have, and we go and train them. So we, we, we do this kind of training for institutions. So that's from there, this particular program was born. That instead of just teaching to the in-house teams, why not make it uh, available to everybody else and design something which people can take across and they become more eligible, more employable in this domain. So the basic structure of this program uh, is that there is a core module, there is a set of core modules, there is a set of eight core modules. Now as I mentioned that some person may be coming from a chartered accountant's background and some person might be coming from a uh, software engineering background. So they would not have one or more of the required background knowledge to take up the core modules. The, this particular program's core modules, these eight core modules, since this is a shortened uh, six months, a very uh, intense program, to get into the core modules, you need to have prerequisites. So there is a prerequisite. So one of the prerequisites is you have basic finance knowledge, you have uh, basic programming knowledge, and you have basic uh, mathematics and statistics knowledge. Now, if one doesn't have one or more of these, they can actually um, uh, go undergo a bridge course. Okay, what we call primer modules. So that's why we have uh, four primer modules. So one can go to the primer modules, uh, come up to speed, come up to the field, the base and then uh, take up the code modules. So we have primers which are optional, which are absolutely optional. But uh, if somebody is not coming from a statistics major, a B stat or an M stat, I would uh, suggest that the statistics, the introduction to statistics primer, uh, one might uh, definitely choose. So primers are optional, there are four optional primers. After that, the eight core modules. And then uh, there is an examination. There are two examinations which are proctored. And one has an industry uh, level project, one has to complete and be eligible for the certification. Now, we don't stop at that. Post certification, you can also pursue advanced electives. So there are advanced electives. So what, what one can then further specialize on. And as part of the program, as part of the program, once you are through the certification, what you also get is continued placement assistance from our side. And that's um, 
uh, always on. That's a lifetime support that we give. And you also get continued education support in the sense that our future programs, if we uh, uh, have any other new module, any new elective, and you have uh, chosen one of those, and there are advancements in that field that has happened, you also get access to all future recordings of our sessions so that you can keep abreast with any development that is happening at free of cost. Now, the uh, four primers that I mentioned, because uh, one needs to have uh, a basic background to come up to the core modules. So we have a introduction to investment finance primer. So these are all optional. Introduction to financial mathematics. So you, uh, you did not go through all the maths. What you require in terms of mathematics are just two fields, linear algebra and calculus. And calculus also very specific type of calculus, not the one that you generally face in, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, master's or uh, undergrad program in mathematics. So that's why this is called financial mathematics, geared towards financial applications. So that part of mathematics, which is very much tailored towards financial applications. Then introduction to probability and statistics, that is the third primer. And there is the primer on programming in R and Python. And after that uh, is the mandatory modules. There are eight mandatory core modules. One is uh, introduction to financial engineering. The second module is financial mathematics part one. The third is financial mathematics part two. Then financial econometrics. Then numerical methods. Because this is an applied field, you need to uh, code up a lot of the th theories that you learn. You hands-on implement them in programs. So you need to uh, develop uh, methods for uh, solving those problems, which are done numerically. Then you go into the heart of it, va valuations of assets and derivatives especially. So you have derivative valuations one and derivatives valuation part two and risk analytics. And after the core modules, you can appear for the exam and uh, you get the certification. You are you can appear for the exam and take the project and you are eligible for the certification. But as I mentioned, uh, you can also pursue additional electives. And this is a list that will keep on growing. So as of now, there are four uh, additional electives. Uh, one may, may not uh, do it. And this is post certification. So this uh, one can do only after you have completed the certification. So advanced financial econometrics, advanced numerical methods, advanced asset pricing and advanced portfolio optimization. Now to go a little bit more into the details of the contents, what we are covering, the primer modules that I mentioned, four of them. So introduction to investment finance um, means uh, we would be introducing you to uh, finance and financial institutions. Introduction to the capital markets, that is the stock markets. Introduction to bond markets, that is debt market. And introduction to derivatives markets. Then there is a primer on introduction to financial mathematics. So those who are coming from a uh, numerical background, they did not take the introduction to financial mathematics. Those who are coming from an engineering background, a programming background, and uh, do not know much about the financial markets, they may take the introduction to finance, investment finance. And then in uh, financial mathematics, as I mentioned, it's Primarily two things. One is uh, linear algebra. So you have introduction to matrices and linear algebra, introduction to differential calculus and integral calculus, and introduction to ordinary differential equations. After that, you have uh, introduction to probability and statistics. So introduction to probability, probability distributions, and uh, descriptive and inferential statistics. And then introduction to programming. So these are the primers one may or may not take. 
than the mandatory core modules. So first is introduction to financial engineering. Here uh, what is covered is introduction to financial economics. So this is, as I mentioned, very different from economics and very different from finance. It's a merger of both, but still very different. So introduction to financial economics, introduction to bond mathematics, options, which is a kind of derivatives. So options fundamentals and introduction to exotic options. Then we cover module two, which is, and they flow one after another. So one has to take module one, and then go to module two and then go to module three and so on and so forth. So module two is financial mathematics part one, where a more detailed look at probability theory is taken up, more advanced probability theory is taken up. Then basic stochastic processes are discussed and then Brownian motion is discussed in detail, which is the heart of uh, quantitative finance. And in fact, a lot of physics as well. Financial mathematics part two, where you are taught stochastic calculus and then the Black-Scholes model for option pricing, which is the bedrock of uh, investment or derivative finance. Then you have financial econometrics, where you have time series analysis and machine learning in this area. Uh, regression analysis and volatility forecasting and numerical methods for partial differential equations and Monte Carlo simulation methods and then you go to derivatives valuations part of it where you have derivatives valuations one that is equity derivatives valuations currency derivative valuations and then derivatives valuations two, interest rate derivatives and credit derivatives. Then the risk analytics, the last of the eight core modules, risk analytics. So introduction to financial risk, market risk, credit risk, and operational and compliance risk. So that completes the core modules. And then one can uh, appear for the exam and take the project. And of course, after post-certification, one can opt for additional electives. So one can go for advanced financial econometrics, so advanced time series methods, asset return statistics and derivative estimations, numerical methods, advanced numerical methods, so advanced simulation methods, numerical methods for stochastic control and optimization, and advanced asset pricing like credit derivatives, which are now very popular and uh, CDOs and CV, uh, XVAs, CVAs and all kinds of um, uh, valuation adjustments, value adjustments, so XVA, so those kind of things. Now, who are the faculty who will be teaching? So uh, this program uh, will be taught by a world-class set of faculty. And that's the best that you have in India to teach this kind of uh, course. And these are people who have worked globally with global financial institutions. And they also have background, impeccable background in terms of uh, where they come from, in terms of education. So there are people from Stanford or Columbia and Berkeley, as well as ISI and the IIMs and IITs. And as I mentioned, these are industry practitioners, top-notch quant practitioners who have worked at the highest level in the topmost global banks. And they bring in the expertise that they gained across the globe with the global work experience. So just a list of some of the faculty who will be teaching the core modules. So Dr. Amit Ram, uh, is a PhD in engineering uh, uh, statistical physics, so uh, quantum mechanics basically, from Stanford. And he has been working uh, with Lehman earlier, then JP Morgan, and now Nomura, and uh, now Great Swiss. Dr. Narayan, who is uh, 
a mathematician by education, a PhD in mathematics from University of Paris, an IIC Bangalore, and he's also an adjunct faculty at IIT Bhuvaneshwar, and he is a chief data scientist at uh, Data Science Engineering Solutions, and has over almost now 10 years of experience in academic uh, and uh, teaching and industry. Dr. Uh, Debashish Guho, he has been a practitioner for almost 25 years with a PhD in operations research from Columbia and IIT Kharagpur. You have Dr. Samir Ranjan, who is a theoretical physicist, PhD in theoretical physics from Purdue and MS in mathematical finance from Columbia. He has worked as a financial engineer in New York for a very long time and then moved to India. Kalyan Roy, a mathematician par excellence in this domain with an MSTAT from ISI and one of the most accomplished mathematician is a very involved mathematician that I know of and with a very good um, uh, experience, extensive experience in the industry in diversified domains from um, uh, analytics in marketing, analytics in finance. So across the board. Then Ritesh Chandra from IIT Kanpur and I'm Calcutta with almost more than 10 years of experience uh, in the in finance industry. Then Vishal with over 10 years of experience and a finance background and engineering, financial engineering background. Sanjay Sloney with an FMS Delhi background and with over 10, 18 years of experience and major, major part of it heading one of the uh, major algo desks in Delhi and now in uh, Mumbai. Now, how is the uh, program going to be delivered? The program delivery is through live lectures. So live faculty led interactive online sessions. So you have uh, the, uh, you can interact with the professor. It will be two way interactive. And there are course materials, reading materials and program libraries, program files which are available, made available to you in digital format. So course material in digital format, reading materials as well as implementation program materials are made available to you and assignments. So uh, after every module there is an assignment that is to be done. Now to get more into the program details, so this is uh, specifically geared for people who are working so that uh, they can take some time off on the weekends and attend the programs from the comfort of their homes. And that's why the class is scheduled on Saturdays and Sundays in the evenings, uh, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Indian time. The course duration is for the core modules uh, is spread over seven months, roughly 300 hours. And the primers are one month for each module with a little bit uh, uh, more for the programming. So the programming would uh, be a little bit more than a month. And the electives, they vary from uh, 20 to 40 hours, depending, but that is uh, post your certification. So any advanced uh, knowledge that comes in the field, any advanced research that comes in the field, they are put in the electives, which are post qualification. Now the course fee for this program, the core modules, as of now, uh, post the GST, uh, the uh, course fee has been fixed at uh, 1,35,000, sorry, 1,55,000 uh, Indian rupee. So that is all inclusive. So 155,000 INR, all inclusive, or 2,400 US dollars, again, all inclusive. 
for all the uh, eight core modules. The primers, uh, th the three primers, primers one, two, and three, uh, they are 17,000 Indian rupee or 270 US dollars each, all inclusive. The fourth primer, the programming primer is 23,000 INR or 350 US dollar, all inclusive. And the elective modules that is post the course, one uh, may not attend any one of them, one may attend any one of them, uh, one likes, and that um, will vary depending on the duration because the durations vary from, uh, and the level, duration and the level from 20,000 to 30,000 Indian rupee, that is 300 to 400 uh, US dollars, all inclusive. The requirement for the certification is uh, that one has to uh, score a minimum of 60% uh, in each of the two proctored exams after the core modules are conducted. Then uh, one has to complete the uh, module-wise assignments, one, are, uh, one is given, and one has to complete the term and project. So completion of all these three requirements uh, makes uh, the a person eligible for certification. And the eligibility for this program is one can have undergrad degree in either engineering or mathematics or statistics, computer science, physics, finance or commerce, uh, economics or econometrics, or one can have an MBA, or one can have a CFA, FRM or PRM, or one can be a chartered accountant. So that uh, would be the eligibility for the program. So this uh, is all about the program.